Welcome back to the Serengeti. The team is heading out to the southern plains where the migration has come full circle. With life still far from normal in much of the world, the Serengeti is thriving. The wildebeest have lots of young, the plains are lush and teeming with life. Safari guides John B. Kivuyo and Richard Knocker, award-winning photographer Paul Joynson Hicks, and inspirational filmmaker Eliza Powell set off once more to take you into the thick of the action. We hope this helps to brighten your day and remind you that we're all still here, ready to welcome you back on safari as soon as you're ready to travel again. So it's a lovely glowing morning here in the Ngorongoro Conservation Area. Um, I look hippo. <laughs> There's a hippo crossing the road. And, um, and we're off on a dawn patrol to see what we can find out there. So we've just heard this lovely owl calling over here. He's somewhere off in the right. He's a Vero's eagle owl, this huge, great, beautiful eye. They've got these wonderful pink eyelids. So let's see if we can find him. So this is the Vero's eagle owl. Huge, great owl. They've got wonderful ear tufts. I'm not sure if you can see them there. That black facial disc. Oh, that's nice. A nice preen keeping his feathers in good shape. Owls, of course, have got these specially modified flight feathers. And a little bit of a fuzz on it that gives them silent flight, because, of course, they're hunting nocturnal creatures, which tend to have a great sense of hearing. Lovely preen edge, isn't it? Look at the way it's shuffling through those feathers. Do you see? They do it so carefully, don't they? So I think you can probably just make out a little bit of movement from her. There she is. But like I say, we can't get a proper... I wish Jombi were here actually, because he would really have enjoyed that owl sight sighting. But unfortunately he had to head back to Arusha yesterday. We really miss you, Jombi. What we've got here is a stunning long-crested eagle. Ah, beautiful. And when he turns his head to the side, you can see his crest. Magic, look at that catch light in the eye. Why is it that raptors always look a little bit grumpy? I mean, let's be honest, they do really, don't they? I mean, look at that, seriously. So he's doing a little bit of morning grooming. Dude, look at that. So we talk so much about the Great Migration, but there's another migration, lots of other migrations, some of which are way more impressive than wildebeest walking a few hundred kilometers around this ecosystem. This is a European roller and in a couple of months time he'll be packing his bags and heading north all the way up to Europe because of course that's where he goes to breed. And of course there are the zebras in the background also on their own migration. Two migrants in the same pick. Okay, so yesterday evening, uh, me and Ricardo went out and we had a very brief encounter with a leopard. It was short and sharp. It, we came up and we were still far from the tree and it hopped out of the tree. Anyway, I managed to get a couple of shots in of stills, uh, no video, so it didn't make the edit yesterday. So I just thought, because I quite like a couple of these pictures, so I just thought I would try and squeeze them in today's episode. So here's one, and then there's another one here as well. Click. And then there's one more. Click. Okay, so very, we've 
just seen some lions in the distance, properly chunky stuff on a nice sunny afternoon. So let's see what they look like. So um, here we are at the lions and you may have remembered that um, uh, we talked a little bit about weaning the other day. Anyway, um, these youngsters here, and I'm going to own this despite what uh, Eleanor says, these are probably between 9 and 12 months old. <laughs> Because if you look at the females, you can see they're not lactating anymore. So basically, I am, you know, Sherlock on safari. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the fact that I'm sitting with Rob Barber, expert lion geezer in my car at all. Just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, that's a fabulous lion sighting. The beautiful late afternoon light. It was just magnificent. Um, anyway, I think that's us for the day. So... I think we might be heading to sundown a hill. Mm-hmm. See what's there. Okay, so ever since May, we've been going around um, filming these episodes, staring at Safari one day at a time. And basically what we've been doing is tracing the migration as we go around. So we thought it would be time, good time now, to tell you more about what the migration is and why it happens. Okay, so let's start here. There's this wonderful map here, which is basically a, a map of the entire Serengeti ecosystem. So what the Serengeti is made up of, obviously Serengeti National Park, where we spent a lot of time. Now this series, we're in, as we said before, the Ngorongoro Conservation Area, which is down here. Um, and there's also some game reserves on uh, around the, the National Park. And then also across the international border in Kenya, you've got the Maasai Mara and the community lands around there. So that's basically the ecosystem that the wildebeest migration and the other migrants move around. Okay, so the great thing about this map is it's color coded. So you'll see that the yellow bits here, that represents open uh, grassland. The pale green is woodland, mainly acacia woodland. And then the dark green down in the southeastern part of the ecosystem is forest, mainly on the flanks of uh, Ngorongoro Crater Highlands. Now, this is where I need you to pay attention because this bit here, this is the key to the whole migration. You've got a series of mountains here, um, a line of volcanoes, both extinct and current. This one down here, Old Onyo Lengai, the active volcano, the mountain of God, which is a wonderful mountain. Now, the reason these are important, um, two things. First of all, Old Onyo Lengai here, um, every few years, because it's an active volcano, it erupts and it deposits a layer of ash all across the plain down in this area here, which means that the soil on the plains is super nutritious. And that's why the wildebeest are here now, and the zebras are here now, because the rain is falling, the plains are green, it's very nutritious, and the wildebeest in particular are, are having their, or have just had their calves now. Now the other really important thing about these mountains, you see all this dark green on the edge here, that's because these mountains act as a barrier to the weather coming in from the Indian Ocean. So all the weather coming in from that side, from the eastern and southern side of the, of the mountains, um, the clouds drop their rain on that side and on this side, the yellow side, the reason it's yellow and one of the reasons it's yellow and grassy is because there's no more rain. This is a really dry part of the ecosystem. So wet side, dry side. So I think you're getting, beginning to get the picture of, uh, of this now. This yellow bit here represent the bit that's both, both very nutritious, but also very dry. So as long as it's raining, the wildebeest and the zebra and the gazelles, they all prefer to be here. But inevitably, come the dry season, there's no more surface water, the grass is all very dry and basically burns off, and there's nothing left. They're forced to move away. And they move away to the west and to the north, eventually congregating up in northern Serengeti and in the Maasai Mara over here for the dry season, where they've got the Mara River and wide open grasslands to keep them over until it starts raining again, and then they all start moving back down again onto the plains. And that, in essence, is the migration. <laughs>